No, this is not clickbait. I really did sell all of my Canon cinema cameras and switch to Sony, and I'm gonna explain why. So the purpose of this video is not to slam Canon or convince you to switch to another brand like Sony. I simply just wanna share my experience from using Canon for so long and the reasons that basically prompted me to switch to Sony. I'm gonna be sharing a lot of my opinions throughout this video. You may agree with some of them, you may not agree with others. That's the beauty of this industry within filmmaking and video production. We can all have our own opinions and own preferences in terms of looks and gear and everything else. So for those of you that are new here, I am a filmmaker and production company owner, and I have been shooting on Canon for my entire professional and amateur career in filmmaking. When I first picked up a camera when I was like 10 or 11 years old, oh, yeah. it was a Canon camera. The first camera that I bought was a Canon T2i back in middle school or high school. And that was the start of a long-term relationship with Canon. Throughout my time with Canon, I've had many, many cameras from the 5D Mark III, the 1DX Mark II, the C200, the C70, the C300 Mark III, and a bunch in between there. Needless to say, I have been a Canon fanboy for a really long time, but something changed at the beginning of this year. So with that, I wanna go into my first point, which is talking about innovation and the lack thereof with Canon. Our current setup prior to selling the Canon cameras was a C300 Mark III and a C70. Now, being that these are both the same exact sensor, Super 35, they make great AB cams, and that's one of the reasons that I picked up a C70 after I bought the C300. We do a lot of corporate interviews and a lot of run and gun shooting, and so both of those cameras were great for us, having internal ND, XLR, just really quick and easy cameras that you can just pick up and use and go shoot without having to do a bunch of camera build and putting on different accessories. The issue with innovation, however, that I I started to have with Canon was that they weren't really doing anything to support current owners and users of the C300 and C70. Canon rarely releases firmware and usually there's not a whole lot within the firmware that's really gonna make a difference in terms of how you use the camera. There is the one exception of when Canon released the C70 firmware that basically gave you internal raw capabilities, which was an awesome firmware update but we just really haven't experienced that with the C300 in the three-ish years that I've owned the camera. What amplified my frustration even more was while Canon wasn't doing anything to innovate in my opinion, I started seeing other brands from Sony, Panasonic, Blackmagic, Red, that were doing a whole lot of other stuff that felt like we were kind of being left in the dust from what the competition was doing and the offerings that they were providing with their cameras. Now that alone wouldn't have convinced me to switch from Canon to Sony, but that was a pretty big factor in combination with the other factors that I'm gonna get into that really helped me make my decision pretty easy. So the next thing that I wanna get into is talking about price and cost value of different camera systems. Outside of RED, Canon is probably the most expensive cinema camera system that you can buy when it comes to comparing features versus cost. When I bought the C300 back in 2020, it was $11,000 USD. And that was an expensive camera. But at the time I felt like I was getting a whole lot of value from buying that camera. And in terms of the competition, there wasn't anything that really stood out that would have convinced me to spend my money elsewhere. Now, when the C70 came out, it was about half the price of the C300 for the same exact Super 35 sensor. It kind of felt like a little bit of a head scratcher to wonder why a year prior I had paid twice as much money for effectively the same exact sensor. Now, yes, there's some features that you're getting like full size XLR, SDI, some other stuff like that. But in the grand scheme of things, is that really worth twice as much? I don't know. Now I think Canon also had to ask themselves the same question because about a month prior to me filming this video right now, Canon dropped the price of the C300 by $2,000. Now that's a significant price drop, but what's even more significant is they dropped the price of the C500 Mark II from about $15,000 to $10,000 for a $5,000 price drop. Now, if you're comparing the prices of these cameras from what they were, to what they are now, there's obviously a significant drop in price. And so you have to wonder, why did Canon do that? Now, I don't have the insider scoop on why they did this, but I think it's safe to assume that the price of other brand cinema cameras had something to do with this. Now we're bringing Sony into this. That brings me to my next point, talking about the price and affordability of the Sony FX cameras. At the time of this filming, the FX3 is about $3,900 and the FX6 is about $5,900. I know some people may disagree with me, but I see the comparison to be the FX3 to the C70 and the FX6 to the C300. What that means is that the FX3 is about $1,500 cheaper than the C300, and the FX6 is about $3,000 cheaper than the C300 with Canon's lowered price. 
Prior to that, it was about $5,000. Now to me, that's a significant difference between both of those comparisons. And so I started to ask myself, why is this so much more expensive for Canon versus Sony? And what am I getting with Canon that I'm not getting with Sony at a lower price? Once I started to do more research into this, I realized that there really wasn't anything that I was getting with Canon that I couldn't have gotten with Sony. And actually the opposite, where there was potential to get a whole lot more from Sony than our current cameras with Canon. Now, price of anything within video production is a factor for me, but it isn't the deciding factor. I'm big on buying equipment that's gonna last you for a very long time and buying really high quality stuff. Because in my opinion, it reflects on your professionalism and how much you're willing to invest in your business and your gear. But just because of that doesn't mean that I'm gonna blindly spend several thousand dollars more for something when I could get the same or better for less money. So once I started to get a little bit more serious about doing research on the Sony FX system and what it had to offer several months ago, I started to get into some of the features that really pushed me over the ledge and convinced me to switch to Sony. The first feature with Sony that we weren't getting with Canon was the full frame sensors. Having the 1DX Mark II and the 5D Mark III back in the day, it was so, so nice to shoot video on full frame. And it felt like kind of a gut punch a little bit going from that to the C200 Super 35 sensor and then the C70 and C300 sensor. So needless to say, I love shooting on full frame. I love the extra range that you get. And I love the fact that you can shoot on the same focal length, but get more within your image. The idea of switching our entire systems from Super 35 to full frame was one that was pretty exciting for me. And the fact that we could do it for less money than we have in the Canon ecosystem was also an exciting thought. The next feature that's offered within Sony that we weren't getting with Canon, specifically with the FX3 versus C70, was the full-size XLR. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Sony FX3 has two full-size XLRs on the top handle that you can either attach or detach from the camera. The C70, on the other hand, has two XLR mini inputs that are built into the camera. Now, I've talked about this previously, but the fact that Canon went with a different XLR system than just using full-size XLR was pretty frustrating for me. It meant that we had to buy separate XLR cables just for the C70s. And then whenever we're going on a shoot, especially where we're using the C300 and the C70, we had to worry about having two different types of XLR cables. I may sound like I'm complaining a little bit here, but when it comes to production gear, you wanna simplify things as much as possible because it means you're gonna forget stuff less and you're gonna be more organized on shoots. So the idea that we could get full-size XLR from the Sony FX3 was actually a pretty big deal for me. The next point talking about the FX3 again is just the overall size and the modularity of it. If you haven't held an FX3, it is a really, really small camera. It's actually smaller than our Canon R6, which is basically just a photo camera that also does video. And then side by side compared to the C70, it is a much smaller camera. Now this is a really big deal for us for several reasons. First, when we're doing anything documentary related, the smaller the camera, the better. You don't wanna cause attention, you don't wanna cause a scene. And so having something that's just really compact and kind of just looks like a little photo camera is a benefit in my opinion. The next point within that is that you can mount the FX3 on really any type of support system and gimbal system. It actually works and fits great on our Ronin RS3 Mini, which is basically meant for really small mirrorless cameras. On the contrary, the C70 does not fit on that gimbal. When we're talking about and comparing the FX3 and the C70, those are kind of the little brothers to the FX6 and the C300. If we need a big production camera and we're going to a big corporate shoot or something like that, we need all of the different custom buttons and presets and everything else, then yeah, we're gonna use a C300, we're gonna use an FX3, we're gonna use a bigger camera. But sometimes we really do need a small system for a variety of reasons. And so with that small system, I want it to be as small as possible. So the FX3 clearly wins there compared to the C70. The last point I'll briefly talk about is not related to technical specs or the features of the different cameras, but it's more so talking about our desire as filmmakers to want to try new things and face new challenges. As a Canon owner and user, I never owned or used any Sony camera at all. On the flip side of that, I've used Canon for so long that I could go through the whole menu system with my eyes closed. Now, some people might not agree with this point, but there was a small component where we were getting a little bit complacent and bored with Canon, and we wanted to try a new system where it was gonna challenge us, it was gonna force us to learn a new system and learn how to use it and get the most out of it. I literally just did the switch, and so I've only been using Sony now for basically a week and a half, but 
in that time, I've started to learn the menu systems. I've started to learn how to properly expose and all the different quirks and settings that make Sony function the best that it can. So with that combination of all of those different reasons, that was enough to convince me to switch and sell my Canon cameras. Lastly, I wanna talk about my plan with Sony cameras and lenses. So right now we have a single FX3 and I've started to buy some G Master glass. I've seen a lot of comparisons between G Master and Sigma glass. They're very, very similar, but I just wanted the added autofocus capabilities of the G Master glass. So the plan is basically to buy the whole G Master Prime suite and some zoom lenses as well. I'm gonna hold off on buying any more Sony cameras until NAB happens next month. There are some rumors about potential cameras that are gonna come out. And so I wanna make sure that there's not gonna be an FX3 Mark II, there's not gonna be an FX6 Mark II before I go in and spend more money on more cameras. Assuming that nothing happens at NAB and Sony doesn't release any new cameras, the plan is to buy an FX6 and then another FX3. Even with all of those three cameras, that is actually less money than the price of the C300 and the C70 combined. Now, going back to the beginning of the video, I mentioned that these are my opinions. I'm not hating on Canon, even though it might seem like I am. I'm always going to support Canon. We actually still have our R6. It's an awesome, awesome photo camera, and we're still gonna be rocking with the L glass. The thing to keep in mind that I actually oftentimes forget is that cameras are tools for us. You can be supportive and loyal to a brand, but at the end of the day, you want to have a camera and system that best suits your needs and is the best tool for you as a filmmaker. For me right now, that's Sony, but that doesn't mean that that's gonna change in the future, and that doesn't mean that Sony has to be the right tool for you. I hope this video is helpful to some of you out there that are maybe going through the same thing or are experiencing similar things with your Canon cameras, or maybe you're on Sony and thinking about switching to Canon. I know I said that I don't wanna influence anyone's decisions, but at the same time, I do wanna be a resource where I'm sharing my thoughts and experience using both of the camera systems. And if you relate to it, great. The comments are wide open down below. Let me know if you have any questions or anything that I missed, or maybe you don't agree with my decisions and opinions. That's totally okay. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next one.